Having low iron levels can really suck. There are symptoms such as fatigue, dizziness, dry skin, sometimes even hair loss. So if you're struggling with low iron, today's video is for you. I'm going to discuss seven science-backed tips to boost your iron absorption and also increase your iron levels. If you're interested, keep watching. Tip number one is to eat more iron-rich foods. Now this is a rather obvious tip, but I have to mention it because sometimes we end up in a rut and when we're in a rut, we don't eat a variety of foods. We're eating the same things again and again, and that can limit the variety of nutrients we get. So it's really important to eat a variety of foods and to get your iron-rich foods on a regular basis, not just once or twice a week, but every single day. So which foods have iron? A lot of foods have iron. I can't possibly list all of them, but basically meat, seafood, beans, lentils, as well as grains and some nuts and seeds, and also some fruits and veggies have iron in them too. My suggestion is to go online, look for a list of iron-rich foods, and pick the ones that you think you can have on a regular basis, the things that you like, and put them down on a sheet of paper and stick that up on the fridge. That way you're able to look at that list every single day and you're more likely to eat those items. Now if you want to make your life easier, I already have a solution for you. I already have lists for you. So I have a list for omnivores and I have a list for vegans and vegetarians. You can print these lists and stick them up on your fridge and they have little check boxes on them so you can check off the foods that you want to enjoy more often. For the foods on the list, I would suggest picking whole foods and minimally processed foods. Typically whole foods and minimally processed foods have a lot more iron than hyper processed foods. Before we move on to the next tip, I need to mention that there are two different kinds of iron in our foods. There's heme iron that's found in animal foods, and then there's non-heme iron that's found in plant foods as well as animal foods. Heme iron is generally better absorbed, and non-heme iron is a little harder to absorb. So there are things that you could do to boost the absorption of that non-heme iron, and that's what I'm going to discuss in the rest of the video. So let's move on to tip number two. Eat something with vitamin C with your iron-rich meals. So vitamin C can help boost the iron absorption. So a very simple thing that you could do is every single time you eat iron-rich foods, pair them with vitamin C-rich foods. As an example, let's say you were to eat beans. Beans are a source of iron. If you pair those beans with tomatoes, that will boost your iron levels. Another example is almonds. Almonds have iron and iron in almonds is a non-heme type and it's difficult to absorb. So you can have the almonds with strawberries or an orange that has vitamin C and that will help you absorb that iron a lot better. If you're interested in a list of vitamin C rich foods as well as combinations of iron and vitamin C, I do have that in my info guide which you can find in the description as well as the pinned comment. You can print those sheets out and again you can stick them up on your fridge as well. Tip number three, soak and strain your beans, lentils, and grains before you cook them. If you eat beans, lentils, and grains, they can be a source of iron, but it can be very difficult to absorb that iron because of something known as phytic acid or phytates. These phytates make it really difficult to absorb the iron because they kind of lock that iron up. So what can you do? There are a number of things that you can do. You can soak, you can ferment, you can sprout. But to be honest, for the majority of people, fermenting and sprouting their beans and lentils is just too much work. So soaking is something that you could try. If you've never soaked before, I do have some information below. It's very simple. So basically what I do is before I cook any beans and lentils or grains, I will soak them in water overnight, strain the water out, and then cook it in fresh water and that makes it easier to digest them and also makes it easier to absorb the iron. Tip number four, avoid coffee and tea with your meals. Now I'm not saying to avoid coffee and tea all the time, just with your meals. Both coffee and tea have compounds such as caffeine, tannins, and polyphenols that make it hard to absorb iron. In fact, in one study, just one cup of black tea reduced the absorption of iron from a meal by 60%. So that's a significant amount. And one simple change you can make is to not have coffee and tea with your meals. Have it in between your meals. Tip number five, avoid calcium supplements with your meals. Calcium makes it harder to absorb iron. So if you are struggling with your iron levels and let's say you take calcium supplements, try not to take them with your iron-rich meals. Take them separately. And I would also apply this knowledge to fortified beverages. So if you're drinking fortified plant milks and you are really struggling with your iron levels, maybe it's a better idea to take them separately from your iron-rich foods. 
Tip number six is to avoid taking over-the-counter antacids unless you absolutely need to take them. I'm not talking about doctor-prescribed antacids. If your doctor has prescribed them, please do take them. This is a discussion for you to have with your doctor. But I am talking about over-the-counter acids such as Tums. I went through this phase 10 years ago and I used to take Tums every single day after a meal. It made me feel better, but I did not realize the harm in doing so. When we take antacids such as Tums, it reduces our stomach acid. But our stomach acid is really, really important for us to digest food and to actually absorb iron. If your stomach acid levels are low because of something like antacids or low in general, it can be very difficult to absorb iron. So if you're popping antacids like pills, please don't. Find another solution for your digestive issues. Talk to your doctor to see if there's something else that you could do. Now, even if you don't take antacids, you could have low stomach acid. A lot of people have low stomach acid. So in my info guide, I have more information on low stomach acid symptoms. So you can read through that and see if you have any of the symptoms. And I also have a few suggestions. Tip number seven is to use non-enameled cast iron cookware. There are studies that show that if you cook in cast iron cookware, especially new cast iron cookware, and you're cooking something that is acidic, that is moist, and you're cooking for a long time, maybe something like applesauce, there is some iron from the cast iron cookware that ends up in the food and then you end up observing it. So it is kind of like an add-on source of iron. Now the problem with this is the majority of foods we cook, we're not really cooking for that long and they're typically dry. So you can't rely on this as a source of iron by any means. And I would say that if you have anyone in your family who has very high iron levels and you have very young children too, you may not want to cook in cast iron for them because they may not need the extra iron. Now let's say you've tried everything in this video and let's say you're also taking doctor prescribed supplements and your iron levels are still not budging. There might be something else at play. So you need to get to the root cause of the problem and in order to do that, you need to talk to your doctor, have a deeper discussion with them. Things like celiac disease, if you have undiagnosed celiac disease, you have no idea what's going on, it could cause low iron levels because of that gut inflammation, your body's unable to absorb iron. Same with something like Crohn's disease. Also, if you have heavy menstrual bleeding, that can also cause low iron. So this is definitely something that you want to discuss with your doctor to figure out if there's something else going on. And once you address that problem, maybe your iron levels will go up. I have a special note for women of childbearing age who are planning to get pregnant in the next year or so. If you are planning to have children and you're planning to get pregnant, it is very important to know what your iron levels are. If you haven't gotten them tested already, go to your doctor, get them tested. Because a lot of women go through iron deficiency anemia when they are pregnant. So it's something to keep in mind to get your iron levels up before you get pregnant if you can. So talk to your doctor, get those levels tested. <music>